they feel they have to do, and that's all, that's all part of this process. That's the dynamic of the series. Baxter, front left. Uh, Baxter Holmes, ESPN. Right. Um, Steve Kerr was asked before the game about LeBron, the athlete, and where he kind of ranks in the world in that category. And he half jokingly said, well, you know, I don't know if there's anyone better. Maybe American Pharaoh. Where in this, in the in the, that discussion, where do you rank him in terms of you know all sports, everything, just LeBron, the athlete in the world, obviously. The athlete yeah. or the, the athlete. athlete player? Just the, the amongst all athletes in the world. Or a rank? I don't know. I'll put, I'll put it this way. I put my money on him in the decathlon. Does that help? David Jeff in USA Today. Uh, David, just a quick update uh, health-wise on Matthew Bellavido, where he is after last night, and Ivan Schumper's shoulder. Uh, good news on Schumper's uh, shoulder. <clears throat> he had an MRI. You know, he, he was examined and evaluated by our medical staff. He has a bruised shoulder. Uh, it is painful. But uh, fortunately, no serious damage. That's really, really good news. Uh, Delhi, obviously, uh, uh, suffering from some fatigue. Uh, and and uh, I don't know whether to call it dehydration or, or, or something else, but uh, uh, the tank is low. And uh, we're doing everything we can to, to fill it back up. That's the best way I can describe it for you. Jeff, over here. To, uh, to follow up on those, Coach, uh, mm -hmm. do you expect both of them to play tomorrow? I do, yes. Three uh, Spears, please your hand. Mark, over here up in the front. Uh, have you talked to Delhi and do you maybe even limit his minutes, or how concerned are you when you put him in tomorrow, what he can potentially do? Well, I told him I was going to limit his minutes, and he said, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, look, we got to, we got to, we got to be realistic and keep our eyes on him and, and see how he recovers. You know, he he, uh, he emptied the tank last night, and, and uh, you know, hopefully, just in the, in the in the ensuing 48 hours, he's going to be able to, to catch up and to get uh, to get back up to par, uh, so to speak, in terms of of, uh, of his body. But uh, he'll be out there, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll just monitor how he's doing. I'm not going to come in there with a specific minute restriction, but we'll, we'll definitely be conscious of it. Have you had a chance to visit with Kyrie? And I did. I just, I just saw Kyrie now. He was in our, he was in our, our session in, in the locker room. It was great to see him. He was on crutches with the cast, but he was in good spirits. And, uh, you know, we're just all hoping that, Wishing him a very, very uh, speedy recovery and a 100% recovery, which I'm sure will, you know, will be the case. Noah, right here. <coughs> Noah Koslov says, Lord, LeBron has consistently talked about that he's doing everything that his teammates ask him to do, that his teammates are asking him to do a lot. What are you specifically asking LeBron to do? Everything that he's doing. Okay. Tom, the back right. Tom Aversure, ESPN. Uh, Coach, usually with teams, it's an either-or proposition. Whether you crash the offensive boards, you get back in transition. It seems like you guys are doing both. How are you able to do that against the Warriors? Well, I mean, there's different tactics for that. And either point is a good one. Uh, and we're doing a good, a good job. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what, but I will tell you that... Uh, it's hard to do both at a high level of efficiency. We're doing a pretty good job of that. As a follow-up, um, are you consciously trying to eat up the clock? It seems like those isolations with LeBron might not be getting the greatest results, but it actually slows the game down um, and gets those offensive rebounds. We're, we're trying to play in a way that allows us to be successful in this series. Whatever that may, means or however that looks or however it's interpreted is fine with me.
we know what we want to do. We know how we, how we want to play and how we need to play. Uh, the important thing is to execute it and, and, uh, and to work at it on both ends of the court. And I think we're doing a decent job of that. Mark, here in the front. Mark Schwartz, ESPN. David, uh, Kyrie and Della Vadova go back a couple of years going to war against each other in practices. At first, apparently, Kyrie was a little bit not so happy about Della Vadova and his tactics and his defense. Can you talk about the way that you've seen those two evolve in their relationship and, and how Kyrie perhaps has made Della Vadova the player he is in this series? Well, you know, when, when you have one guy that's the hands down star of the team, and then you have another guy trying to make the team, competing for his position, then you can probably expect some friction uh, in practice. And uh, maybe some of that existed before. I wasn't here, so I can't, I can't honestly tell you. Uh, I've seen nothing but good relations between the two of them since the day I walked in the door. Uh, but I can, I can certainly understand where that may have come from. And uh, I think that Delhi, uh, rightfully so, has earned Kyrie's respect. And I think that Kyrie has also uh, lifted him up by encouraging him, by giving him confidence, by, by talking with him, uh, by believing in him. You know, we played the two of them together a good bit this year, Mark, also, you know, in, in some winning situations because of the particular skill sets that both of them possess. Uh, you have just a great relationship there between the two of them. And you want that between your starting point guard and your backup point guard. And, and uh, uh, obviously right now the tables are turned and, and Kai is out, so he's just, you know, he's just supporting Delhi. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think they've helped each other grow a great deal. And, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the great things about the dynamic of the team. Last two in the back and over here, Chris. Coach, here in the middle, Aaron Goldhammer, ESPN Cleveland. What was the moment, if there was one, when you realized that the Cavs maybe had something special in Matthew Delvadova? Um, when I first came, when we were practicing in uh, preparation for the Las Vegas Summer League, you know, I've been around the block a few times. And uh, you recognize character when you see it. And you recognize guys that are team oriented and have you know, their values and their and their uh, and their ideals for how to play the game in the right place. You don't see it as much as you'd like, but when you do, it's it's easily recognizable. So you know, you're asking what I do. I do that pretty 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 quick. Chris, last one back. Hey, David, Chris Sheridan, Sheridan Hoops. Chris? Been around the block a few times, as you said. Uh, this question a little bit out of left field, but I'm curious as to your answer. You dealt with, with the media, you got second guess like crazy last year in, in Maccabi. You got second guess a lot this year in, in Cleveland. How is the American media different from, say, the Israeli media or the Russian media that you've dealt with in, uh, in recent years? <laughs> I didn't set him up for that question. <laughs> and I really want to answer it, but I'm not going. I'm thankful for the media everywhere because all of us are living from it. And it's great that so many people care about the game, and it's great that so many people uh, are interested in it. It's great that so many people critique it. Everybody's got their own style, and everybody's got their own motivation. A lot of people also have their own agendas, and that's all fun. It's all part of this great ride that we're on. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that, that, that I can be a part of that, too. All right. Thanks, Thank you.